So one of the things that we care about sometimes with our hash functions, and how much we care about this really depends on the application, is whether or not that hash function is actually going to produce a collision. Meaning, uh, what's the likelihood that I'll find two inputs that hash to the same value? Now, a lot of this really depends on how large the hash value is. Imagine that if I have a hash uh, function that only produces 16 different values. Well, pretty soon, I'm going to find a collision. In fact, you know, obviously after 16, this is like the pigeonhole principle, right? After 16 inputs, I'm going to have a collision because I've run out of places to put things. That can be okay. It turns out there are applications where hash collisions are expected and normal. And then there are other applications like, for example, Git, which we talked about that uses hashes to fingerprint content, where hash collisions are a huge problem. And so what we need to do is reckon with how likely they are in certain scenarios, okay? Um, so again, you know, it, it really depends on the application, right? If the size of the hash is small, we expect collisions. As the hash gets larger, uh, we, the re collisions should really never happen and entire systems are predicated on that being true. All right, so the interesting thing is that this is connected to this idea that's called the birthday paradox. Um, so in, and, and some of you may know this, some of you may not know this. So in a room with 100 students, right, um, what's the probability that two will share the same birthday? Now here's what's important about this. I didn't say what's the probability that two will have a specific birthday, like, you know, uh, October 29th. What I said is, what's the probability that two, any two of them, will share the same birthday? So, you know, some of you might think, you think, you know, okay, well, 365 divided by 100, so it's about a third. Uh, no, uh, it turns out it's one. It's going to happen. Uh, so this is very, very hot. It turns out the number of students or number of people, children uh, that you need in order for this to, ha you'd have a 50% probability, uh, 23. That's incredible, right? So if you get 23 people together, you're, you know, like odds are as good as a coin flip that two of them will have the same birthday. Isn't that cool? Statistics, mind boggling. Um, so now this is fascinating from the perspective of social interaction, right? Um, but it's terrible for our hash functions because collisions turn out to be a lot more common than we think because you can basically map this to a hash function. So say the hash function is the birth, you know, assigning someone a birthday. Um, it only takes 23 if birthdays, you know, there are 365 birthdays. So that's the size of my hash output. Um, it only takes 23 inputs before I have a 50% chance of having a collision. Um, so let's look at, um, so essentially, let's think about the relationship between that and the output space, okay? Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this as relationship to the, to the size of the hash, okay? So if I have a 16-bit hash uh, output, right? So the hash function produces a number uh, that's between 0 and 2 to the 16th minus 1 which is like 65,000 or so, um, then I only need 300, um, 300 files before I would find two, uh, before the probability that there would be a collision would be over 50%. Um, and this is from an old semester, but you know, the Android starter code that we gave you for MP0 probably had at least 80 files in this. So 16 bits is not enough. 32 bits, so now I go to 32 bits, I get 77,000 files. Okay, so that's an improvement. Um, but your computer probably has several million files on it already. It probably came with several million from the factory. Uh, only you've, ad you've added only a small number to that. For 64 bits, now we're talking about like 5 billion files. So again, this is the number of files that you can hash before the probability that there's a collision is 50%. Now keep in mind, for certain systems like Git, the probability that there's a collision has to be zero. Right. Funk, like you will never get it to actual zero, but it has to be very, 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 very small. So 50% is a huge probability for a system like Git. This is not okay. Um, so github.com has 1 billion files on it already, and that's probably up to 2 or maybe even 3 billion now. Um, and so this is not okay, 64 bits. 128-bit hash function? Okay, so now we're starting to see numbers that we like. Uh, I'd have to, I don't even know what that is. Gajillion, quintillion... Google Illion, I, I, I run out of, you know, I, I, once you get past trillion, I, I'm not sure what to call things. Um, so that's a lot. Git actually, at least at the time that I wrote these slides, 
uses a 160-bit hash output. Uh, so the hash function that it uses produces 160 bits worth of output. Um, and again, that's designed to be very, very, very conservative because the entire Git system is predicated on this idea that we'll never have a collision. There are other systems, including one that we'll build tomorrow together, that in which collisions are fine and they're expected and we have ways to deal in with them. Uh, but for certain types of systems that, uses ha that use hashes to do fingerprinting, collisions are a complete no-no like it never can happen. And so what we do is we just choose a hash output that's big enough to make sure that we never ever have a collision in practice.